I can always make more money, but I cannot make more time. And if I want to be the visionary of this brand, like I need to delegate and get things off my plate. If you're a jewelry designer who sells at in-person shows, I am talking to you. I know from experience and from hearing from all of you, tell me about your struggle with the in-person shows. You love them, but you also hate them because they cause extreme burnout. And you're always, all y'all's trying to find a way to leverage those shows and grow your audience, grow your email list and get sales long after the show. So if that's you, if that sounds familiar, then you're going to love this episode today. Today, I interview a designer named Alex Kathleen, where she's going to talk about her experience using our techniques that we taught her in one of our programs to leverage her show to build her email list and SMS subscribers by 200 people by increasing her sales at just one event by 192%, increasing her customer return rate and so much more. Plus, she followed one strategy that we gave her and sold 150 pieces of jewelry in a couple of days. Actually, she sold more than that, but using the one strategy that we did, she sold 150 from that one strategy. So get excited. Let's dive in. I'm Tracy Matthews. I'm the Chief Visionary Officer of Flourish and Thrive Academy and the host of the Thrive by Design podcast. For the past 11 years, I've been helping jewelry business owners launch, grow, and scale successful jewelry businesses using my methodology called the Desired Brand Effect. And I've helped over 8,500 different brands launch, grow, and scale six and seven figure businesses with that methodology. People like Alex Kathleen, who is crushing it right now. Alex Boxel is the founder of Alex Kathleen Accessories, a jewelry company that specializes in everyday and permanent jewelry to make women feel beautiful just as they are. Her business was actually started as a hobby and eventually turned into a necessity when she moved to the small town of Saskatchewan, Canada. I hope I said that right. Anyway, today she is loving her business and is raising a family in tandem with growing this jewelry business. So let's listen to a little bit more about Alex's story. Well, I'm really excited to have another guest on the show, Alex Kathleen of Alex Kathleen Accessories. She is gracious enough to talk a little bit more about her experience in one of our programs. And I want to thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me. I, I've been excited for this. Yay, it's going to be great. So where, okay, my first question to you is we were talking in the free show and Kathleen has nothing to do with your name. So <laughs> your name is Alex Boxall, but you go by yes. Alex Kathleen. So yes. I want to hear the backstory on this because. <laughs> okay, so the backstory is that it was, act, my name was actually supposed to be Alex Kathleen. And for some reason, in the crazy state of having a baby, my mom put Courtney as my middle name. And so it's always supposed to be Kathleen. It's my great grandmother's name. So it's a little homage to her and a reminder to my parents that they uh, picked the wrong name. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> I love it. So you have a brand called Alex Kathleen Accessories. Tell me yes. a little bit about your journey into becoming a designer and a maker. I was always that little girl who was making friendship bracelets. And I remember making my mom like beaded bracelets and wire wrapped rings. And it's just always been, I was never a sports girl. So mm -hmm. I was in, I enjoyed that side of my life. And as I got older, it was just kind of something I did on the side for fun. And it actually turned into a necessity when I got married and moved to a small town. I had a job lined up for when I moved to this place and it fell through. And I, there were no job opportunities for what I was working in. I was in human resources and, and there was nothing at that time. So my husband and I talked and he's like, well, why don't you give it a go? I was yeah. like, okay, I can do this. So I, I started in about 2014 is when we kind of decided, yeah, let's, let's try this out. And then from there, it, I started, I think I started on Etsy and then quickly moved over to my own Shopify site pretty much from the get go. And from 2014 to about 2018, I was really growing my business. I went to a lot of shows. I was 
pretty good on the online side of things. I had an email list. I actually started following Flourish and Thrive pretty early on in my career. So um, that was a huge help. And then in 2018, I had my son and I thought I could do both and do both well, being a mom and a business owner. And I quickly realized I was doing neither well. <laughs> so I I kind of put my business onto a part-time basis and I would attend shows here and there for just like a little influx of cash. And then in 2020, I decided I was going to put my kid in daycare and I was going to go full force in this business and see where I could take it. That was March. So we all know okay. what happened yep. <laughs> then. The pandemic hit and I did a complete 180 and I basically, I didn't close my business, but I just put it on the back burner and I was like, you know what? I have to just focus on taking care of my little boy. Mm -hmm. I can't go to any shows. So that's what I'm going to do. So it ended up being an unintentional, like three-year hiatus mm. and I was planning to come back working into my in my business actually this spring and permanent jewelry actually kind of fell yeah. into my lap and I was like you know what no one has heard of it here I think I need to get back into my business sooner than later so I officially relaunched I think December of 2023 with new jewelry and new permanent jewelry and now I have a little tiny space in a salon in the little town that I live in. And I, and that's kind of where we are right now, doing mostly in-person stuff and working on my online stuff. I love that. The permanent jewelry thing is like nuts. I've, it's I've been talking wild. to people like permanent jewelry trainers. Like the first time I heard, I'm like, what is permanent jewelry? I was talking to Angela Monica, who's a previous momentum student of ours. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, our permanent jewelry is going crazy. This was like two years ago. And I'm like, well, what the heck is permanent jewelry? And yeah, I, didn't real, I mean, I, I knew what it was, but I didn't know what it was. Cause it's like this whole new kind of like pop-up and I've heard yeah. so many just like random people who not are not even jewelry designers who are just starting it's to do it. It's wild. I have like multiple people in my small town who are doing it. And so it's really good that I do what I do because I'm able to differentiate myself from yeah. the get go going, I've been in jewelry for 10 years. I know what I'm doing. So yeah. So it's been, it's been crazy. So crazy. What's the inspiration behind your brand? I would, I seek a lot of information from information inspiration <laughs> from women in my life, from the women around me. And I create pieces based on them and what they need with obviously like my little spin on things. But I, the main thing is that I make pieces that are really effortless, easy to wear. So I use a lot of gold filled pieces. I have a little bit of the stainless steel for people who want a more affordable price point. And I want them to just be able to put it on, set it and forget it. There's also meaning behind each piece mm -hmm. or most of my pieces. The main thing that kind of motivates me and drives me to do what I do is that I feel like we, we all matter and exactly as we are in our current situation in life, whether you're a mom or not, if you're a career person, like you matter, I matter exactly as we are. And so there's that underlying little piece of inspiration in all of my pieces, just little reminders that these women are beautiful and incomparable and valuable just the way they are. So, yeah. I love that. I love it. Jewelry inspired by powerful women. Yes, totally. It's great. So you joined us for a challenge uh, a few, a little while ago. And this yeah. is all about growing your online sales and building your email list and getting more traffic and conversion and all those things. Tell me what was going on in your business at that time. So at that time, I was selling a lot in person. And I'm definitely one of those people who uh, think in the moment and don't plan too far ahead. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, I was like, okay, 
I don't want to be doing this at Christmas time. Where I live, it gets super cold and really snowy. Mm -hmm. And I live about three hours from the bigger center. And so if I'm going to do any trade shows or markets, I have to drive in the storm. And I knew that I did not want to do that. So even though my sales in person were going really well at that time, I knew that I needed to start focusing on my online business. Mm -hmm. And I had kind of like not given it the time and attention that I needed in order for future growth. Okay, awesome. So you decided to join us for our TYC mm -hmm. program and things are going well for you right now. So tell me a little bit about what's going on in your business now. For sure. So TYC kind of made me get to work, <laughs> lit little fires under my butt to like do the job. I guess the most recent thing that has happened is that I, I attended a two-day market this past weekend, and it's one that I have attended before. And we had taken the turn your in-person mm -hmm. clients to online, that one training, and listening to ways to improve my booth. And so I implemented a lot of the strategies on the, the in-person booth like making my banners more appealing, adding photography onto it. And I think it worked because my booth was never quiet. Like I had people come the second day being like, yeah, we couldn't actually get into your booth. It was too packed, which was really cool. It was amazing. And so, so that was like one of the first things that I implemented. But the main thing about that event was I really worked my muscles on asking people to join my VIP list because I knew because of TYC that I was looking into the future. I needed these people to become online shoppers. And so I asked a lot of people to, if they would enter my VIP list, enter the giveaway. And I ended up adding 200 people to my oh, wow. email list and my SMS list. Yes. Oh my God. At a small town pop-up that not small town, but like a small. lake pop-up. Yeah. So that's insane. Yeah. And it usually it was somebody like I would see them looking at my stuff. So it wasn't just like random people walking by. So, and the fact that I not only got their emails, but their SMS was huge because it's so much easier to get a hold of them that way. So. That is so yeah. great. How how do you oh, feel like your sales were affected by redesigning really well? <laughs> so <laughs> I went back to look at my sales from last time, and they were up one hundred and ninety one percent from last oh my year. Gosh. And I thought last year was unbelievable. So wow, yes. I think what I learned also instilled some confidence in me to ask and be bold and. And I think that was more of the change than anything that I had the confidence inside of myself to, to get people to come in and buy and, and share their emails. Do you have a strategy for follow-up after the show? Yes. I, I actually have a giveaway flow on Clavio. So I enter, I actually don't enter all the names anymore. I, because I've been working smarter, not harder. And I hired a girl in town to enter all of the names and emails and phone numbers. And I follow up with uh, thanks for entering and leaving your name and number. And you're not the winner, but here's a $10 coupon gift card to shop on the site. So I have this flow and then I move them into my, to my main list from there. Oh, that's so exciting. I love it. I'm excited to see what the results are. It's really soon. Yeah, me too. Yeah. It just, I, I, we just got all the names entered yesterday. So the flow just started. So I'll keep okay. you posted. I might have to get you like report back. Let me know. Yeah. <laughs> That's so great. What are you doing differently now that has a, that has had a big impact on your sales and your marketing strategy? I think one of the biggest things is that I'm way better at taking action. Because we invested money into this program, you take a, you take your Thursday training, you don't want to show up on Tuesday or even Monday morning with Chelsea. You don't want to show up and not have anything 
prepared and done because you feel a little bit silly and embarrassed. So that would probably be like my number one thing is that I don't procrastinate. I just get it done. Like mm -hmm. stop thinking about it and go work. But one of the specific things that I've been doing is utilizing our content planning strategy. Mm -hmm. And that has been a huge weight off of my shoulders instead of just like throwing spaghetti on the wall and seeing yeah. what sticks. I actually have a plan of attack of, okay, this month we're going to be talking about how to style your jewelry in the summer or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that I can use one piece of content and push it out to so many different things. Also my SMS flows. I, there were so many things that I learned in there that in that training that I had to implement right away because I was not utilizing it the way I could be. And then also Pinterest. I didn't realize how important Pinterest could be in our business. And that training really opened my eyes to the whole, if I want to get more eyes on my website, I just like need to get more people into my funnel. And then going on to Pinterest, I saw that I had about 700,000 monthly views. Wow. That I'm not doing anything with. So TYC made me rethink, rethink my strategy in that area because uh, I didn't have one. <laughs> Pinterest is such a powerful tool. Someone else just mentioned it that I've been interviewing about like how that has impacted their business as well. Yeah. It's so that's so kind of my current focus because it just, I think there's so much untapped potential there. Yeah. And Andrea is so good. She's such a great teacher. Amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. So, so good. That I love all of this stuff. So how's the program and community and coaches? Like what were some of your favorite things about that? Why did you decide to join us for the TYC program? Like I said previously, I have a tendency to think of things in the now instead of planning ahead. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if I didn't want to rely on holiday markets for my income, I needed to set up the systems and strategies for online sales now. And I also needed something more than a self-paced program. Mm -hmm. I have, I am a course junkie. I have major FOMO when I see a new course come out, like, well, what if they have the magic strategy and I've learned the magic strategy? It's just do the work, like just, just do the work. Instead of waiting to see what else some, someone else is doing, just like do it. So I have been a longtime follower and fan of Flourish and Thrive. And it was time for me to just like get more accountability. And I knew that this program would really force me to implement. So what do you like about the structure of the program? I think that's maybe a, a good way. to. Oh, I love it. I love the schedule of how things are. So we do all of our learning on Thursday and it gave me the weekend, which was better for me because my boys could be distracted, it gave me the weekend to implement things. And I loved that we had the opportunity to have accountability calls with Chelsea and Lauren. And I liked that you didn't, you weren't given too much time in between training and feedback because it made you implement quicker yeah it was it was really awesome and I loved the like sporadic bonus calls too <laughs> we're there to support you yeah the structure was designed intentionally we give I think two or three implementation weeks so that you guys can catch up but we want to make sure that you're we want to push you into action and so the mm -hmm. intensive style which it is intense but the intensive style mm -hmm. helps kind of push the students into action yeah it was great so Alex, I want to ask you, like, how are you showing up different as a business owner now? Oh, I love this question because it really made me think of like Alex from April to Alex in J July. <laughs> and I think one of the biggest things is that I'm actually showing up. I'm actually showing up and doing the work. I was very inconsistent before. And now I'm taking immediate action on things that I like things that I think of, oh, I need to quickly do this flow 
a browse abandonment flow. That was what it was the other night. And I'm like, okay, just go and do it. And so, and it didn't even take me long. And I used to just like really get into my head about how long things might take. I love being able to see the results from my effort mm -hmm. in a, and I think that's what I've forgotten about that when you do things you and you're consistent, you will see results. And that's been really good motivation and encouraging for me. Uh, I'm also learning to work smarter, not harder. And that includes hiring things out and taking some of those small jobs, like entering 200 names into a spreadsheet mm -hmm. and someone else can do that for me. And I can always make more money but I cannot make more time. And if I want to be the visionary of this brand, like I need to delegate and get things off my plate because th yes, those names will make me money, but I can do so someone else can do that for me. I love that delegating, getting the things off your plate, understanding mm -hmm. like how to really leverage your unique talents in a way that is yes. going to get more done and get stuff off your yeah. plate. Yeah, that's yeah. like, you know, music to my ears. I'm like, what, what is that yeah. she's doing that people say? <laughs> <laughs> what were some of the specific results that you experienced? So at the beginning of the course, we were talking about moving old inventory. And one of the things that was suggested is doing mystery bags or grab bags. So I pulled as many things as I could find in my closet and I created a bunch of grab bags. And this past weekend, I sold about 50 grab bags and people kept coming back for more because they loved what was inside them. It was a win-win. I moved out a ton of stuff and they were all really happy. My sales were also up in that specific trade show, 191%, which was amazing for me. And it felt really good to know that I can make that kind of money and that I'm capable of it. And I also grew my list by my SMS list by 200 and then added 200 emails to my list as well. That is so great. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so happy for you. I hope that this, it just keeps growing and growing. Yeah. Thank you. How has your business and life changed since taking the TYC? Because I've been able to take action and implement quickly, I'm actually getting work done during my working time blocks. So instead of wasting time scrolling social media, I'm getting my work done. And when I come home, I can actually be focused and intentional with my time when I'm with my kids and my husband. And that's been a huge a huge game changer for me because it's as a small business and someone who runs their own thing, it's so hard to turn our brains off. And I'm constantly thinking about the to-do list and, oh, this is a great idea. And that's a great idea. And, oh, I should do this. And I'm just now able to like actually implement these things that I had ideas about, but during the time that I need to. And and that's been a really huge thing for both my business and for my family life. I love that. What would you say to someone who's thinking about the TYC? If you are prepared to do the work, you need to do this. You have to make time for it. This was probably the worst time possible for me to join TYC with my family's schedule and life. But I knew that if I took the time to do it, it would be worth it. So make the time for it and just sign up and get things done. That's so awesome. Where can everyone find you? You can find me on Instagram at, at Alex Kaplan. So that's A-L-E-X-K-A-T-H-L-Y-N. And on my website, shopaka.ca. Thank you so much for being here today. It's been so nice talking to you. Thanks so much for having me, Tracy. Awesome. Yay. Thank you so much for listening to the show today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you subscribe to our channel for more jewelry business advice and tips and this podcast. You will love it. 
And if you would like to learn a little bit more about our train your customers to buy from you online program, make sure that you head on over to floorsthriveacademy.com forward slash TYC. This 12 week accelerator style program is designed to move you into action and to help you make sales in real time. So if you've been burned out by the show circuit and you want a better way, more reliable, tangible, exciting way to actually grow your jewelry business, then consider joining the TYC. I promise you it will change your life. Head on over to floorsriveacademy.com forward slash TYC.